Hello everyone and welcome to Hugo's Desk. My name is Hugo Guerra and today we are going to disconstruct one of the shots of the latest trailer for The Walking Dead March to War that I had the pleasure to work on for Fire.Smoke. The trailer The Walking Dead March to War was directed by myself and by Will O'Connor at Fire.Smoke. It was with great pleasure that we worked on this trailer for Disruptor Bean and I can't wait to show you some of the shots and some of the techniques that we used. This is going to be the first this construction of this project, I'm going to use a shot from uh, the project called the Katana shot, uh, which I will show you in a minute. Don't forget, of course, to visit uh, Walking Dead March to War website to check out the game. You can also get the game on both Android and also at the App Store as well. And of course, don't forget to uh, check out the full trailer at uh, YouTube. Uh, you can find the full trailer at Walking Dead March to War launch trailer for this Rip to Beam. We're very happy with this trailer. We already got almost half a million views on it. it goes without saying that you should always check out uh, the great work that we do at Fire.Smoke. And last but not least, I would like to thank all of these supporters and Patreon for the amazing, amazing uh, financial support that they are giving to this channel. Uh, I can't thank you enough. I currently have 81 Patreons. And of course, if you're watching this video for the first time, if you would like to see more videos like this and you would like to support my channel to help me do these videos more regular, uh, please uh, support. Even if it's just one dollar, it would mean the world to me and it will really help to actually do more of these videos because as you guys know, I am a full-time director. I usually am very busy with projects, uh, but if I can get more support in Patreon, then I can focus more in the channel. So please donate if you can. And if you can't donate, that is not a problem at all. The videos are always free uh, a few weeks later on YouTube. So only donate if you really have the money to do so. Thank you so much. As you saw, the project is very dark. So of course, when you have projects that are these dark and have so many blacks and whites, it's always very important for you to have good equipment. So when you're doing color correction and you know finishing the shots, it's just gonna give you a little really short introduction to what I usually use for a project like this. So uh, as you can see, this is my setup and my, uh, in this area here, I have some of my, what I can say, instrument monitors really. I have a Blackmagic 4K monitor here, and this is mainly my main Rexensor 9 monitor that I can kind of see how the colors look on a general broadcast monitor. This monitor is very, uh, you know, it lacks a lot of control. You don't really have a lot of control for color correction, but it's a great monitor just to have an overview look of how the shot looks on a broadcast monitor. And it's very close to an iPad, which is great, which my, most of my clients uh, usually look through an iPad anyway. Then down here, I have um, the smart uh, vector scopes. Uh, basically, these are the smart scopes from Blackmagic. On one side, I have my um, vector scope, and then on the other side, I have my waveform. And basically, as you can see, the waveform allows you to really understand the luminance of each shot, um, which means allows you really to be very accurate in terms of black levels, midtones, and and you know, and highlights. This, on the other hand, is a great tool for you to understand red, green, blue, and yellow, and magenta to really see the balance of your image. Uh, you can check my tutorial about color correction and I kind of deal with these kind of things on that tutorial. You can kind of have a look. Down here I have, these are really bad monitors. They're not even 8-bit, they're only 6-bit. Um, so in this side I have a black, black and white version of the image and then I have a colored version. This really represents a really bad screen, you know, and it's really good for you to always watch everything on a really bad screen because most people have bad screens. And then on the other side, I have a black and white and black and white images really help you to see the luminance values of images. And then on the other hand, on this side here, I have a proper monitor. So this is a Technicolor approved and calibrated monitor. It has hardware uh, calibration. Uh, this is the BenQ PV 3200PT and it's a video production monitor. Really recommend you because it, it's much better than these monitors for you to really do accurate color correction. 
without further ado, let's get on with the disc construction. We're going to disconstruct the shot, which is my favorite shot on this trailer. It's called the Katana shot. That's the name we gave the shot, uh, of course, because we didn't really have a number for it. Uh, it's one of my favorite shots because uh, it is heavily inspired by an actual cover from The Walking Dead, which is this cover that you can see here, which is issue 145 uh, called Blood for Blood. And this was highly the, the really the biggest inspiration we had to create this this actual shot. Uh, actually, the all the shots on the trailer are heavily inspired by the comic books, of course, uh, because that's what the game March to War is about, really. Now, the cool thing about this shot is that this shot is uh, a nice shot to to disconstruct because it's a projection system using a Photoshop uh, layer. Um, and without further ado, I want to show you the actual Photoshop uh, matte painting. This is the Photoshop matte painting, the original matte painting that was created. Uh, this matte painting was created by one of our artists at Fire Smoke. Uh, if you guys want to check out his work, uh, his, his name is Robin uh, Flory, and he's an amazing concept artist and matte painter, and you should really check out on at Flory inkcom Really check out his work. He has a really nice portfolio for you to guys to check. Just so you guys have an idea of how this was done. Uh, basically, it started with a back plate with some scratches. It then went into an actual photo of a desert. Uh, from there, we then went into having some floors with some grass, some more grass. Of course, we had the puddle of blood, which had the reflection of the blade. Uh, we then went in to have a skull. Um, we then had some shadows, some bushes, some more grass. Uh, all of it to give this sense of a desert uh, feeling. We then had, of course, the actual shadow of the katana. We had the katana itself as a CG asset uh, from Maya. We then, of course, had the katana with some scratches and some reflections, some paintwork, some blood, and then a top gradient on the top of everything. Now, at the very end, this, of course, was the original matte painting that was created. Uh, then this matte painting, of course, from Photoshop went into Nuke inside of Nuke. So the script, as you can see, is not very, 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 very big. Um, it's a quite simple script. And the matte painting, of course, came in as a PSD file. As you know, in Nuke, you can open up all the PSD files with breakout layers. Uh, that's what I'm doing up here. I have them all in breakout layers. And basically, just breaks out all the layers that uh, you would have uh, from the matte painting. So this was all, of course, a projection system. So we basically started with having the matte painting. And then from there, we started using the sky. Then I used the shuffle uh, to bring out the scratches. Um, with the scratches, I did a bit of color correction on the scratches because it was a bit too bright. We also had a white gradient. This white gradient was also color corrected. These then get uh, merged uh, to provide you with this sky that you can see here, uh, which is nothing more than a, a gradient uh, scra with the scratches. Then we did a bit of color correction to it to make it a bit more punchy. Uh, and then that went into a 3D card. Now, inside the 3D system of Nuke, it became just a simple card. Uh, from there, we had a render camera that we animated. This camera was, of course, a very simple camera move, just a pan. Basically, it was just a dolly in with the camera. Um, then from there, you can clearly see that we have an animation. I'm going to show you the animation. It's really simple. Just a little dolly in in 3D. Nothing fancy can be done on any application, even, even really uh, on After Effects. The cool thing about this project is because it's such a two and a half D project, is it could really be done on other applications. But uh, of course, my favorite compositing application is Nuke, and of course, I had to do it with Nuke. Um, then I went in, and as you can see, the structure that I usually use is I start with my matte painting, then I I output one layer, which is the sky, then I output the back hill, then I output the ground, then I output the background grass, then I output the katana, then I output the foreground grass, then the katana shadow, the texture, and not, not you know, last but not least, some color correction at the very end. So, I'm, of course, as you can see, it's a very organized script, as I am usually, you guys know how I am, um, and uh, it's always better for you to be organized. So, next up is the hills, the back hill. So, the back hill is nothing more than just basically these, uh, this hill here, and then we have also the back back hill. Uh, now, the back hill goes in here, gets cropped a little bit, uh, gets a bit of color corrected, gets an edge blur because I wanted to simulate a little bit of the depth of field and also to break up 
some of the bad edges that we had on Photoshop. Um, then from there, the back heel as well gets pre-multiplied and eroded. Uh, and then we merge both of them together. So basically we get something like this. We get two layers of back heels um, for that. That again goes into a 3D card um, and then it gets merged. Uh, some color correction happens as well. And we do have a bouquet effect here using the PG bouquet uh, plugin, which is my favorite depth of field plugin. Um, you should really check it out. PG Bouguet is really the best one. It really provides you a much more photoreal uh, depth of field than anything else. And uh, as you can see now, I have the sky and the background. Now, I for creative choices, I did choose to leave the scratches not defocused, otherwise it would look a bit weird. Uh, but as you see, if I jump to 3D, you can now see that I already have started having some parallax between the sky and the uh, ground. Of course, I could have put this ground as a projection, but I didn't really. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, then from this moment on, we go into the ground. Now, the ground is a bit more complicated. We have um, the ground with the puddle of blood, uh, which is this one here. We then have uh, this gets merged to the actual darkness of the puddle of blood, which gives you something like this, which is nothing more than, than just basically the pre-multiplication. There's a bit of color correction happening. Uh, then we have more layers. We have basically um, the extra layers on this side, which are nothing more than more of the grass and the shadows of the grass. Uh, this, of course, the shadows of grass is basically an alpha channel that I use to pipe into this grade node. And this grade node is nothing more than uh, basically using um, a multiplication, a gamma, uh, a gain of 0, 03. I lower the color correction to create an effect of shadows. That's usually always the best way for you to do shadows. You usually want to pump in some kind of alpha channel. And then by using the, the actual, you know, you can actually lower it. Now, from there on, I use a Project 3D. Um, this Project 3D is being applied to a ground. Uh, this ground is nothing more. I'm going to just put a little light here so you guys can see. It's not really nothing more than just a really small displacement of a ground, just to pretend that it's like a desert. Uh, we then project uh, using a projection and apply material. And you basically get something like this. Uh, which is nothing more than a, a really rough projection of the ground with the shadows through the camera perspective. looks a bit weird through here, but if I look at it through the scanline render, you can kind of see that it looks great, really great. Uh, and also if I look at it through this one here, it looks good as well. Uh, so that's how that was done. Uh, then I, of course, have some bouquet effect, depth of field. Uh, this, basically, I'm using the actual depth of field from the scanline render. Don't forget the scanline render actually creates a depth pass, uh, which is actually visible here. You can, can kind of see that there's a depth pass created by the depth of, and that's why I did a projection system because it it then uh, gives you a depth pass. It's actually uh, much more, more more helpful. Then that gives you a depth, depth of field. And as you can see, I have like a nice depth of field going on on the beginning. I'm gonna go to the first frame here. So you guys can see, you can kind of see that it, I'm pulling focus in the katana and then having some depth of field in the front and on the back as well, of course. This then goes in through a lot of color correction, never forgetting the pre-multiplication and pre-multiplication. I got a bit of sh a cheeky sharpen here using a lock to lin, uh, just to make sure that I, as I showed you on many other tutorials, I usually convert to lock to lin so that I don't have any black levels or white levels, and then I can sharpen, and then I can go back to the same lock to lin. So basically inverting it, it's uh, lin to log, and then goes back to log to lin. That's the way that we usually do this. Um, then this goes in, of course, to the main comp. So we had, before we had the sky, just bear with me, sometimes it takes a bit of time. Um, we had the sky, then of course this now brings in the floor with the shadows and the actual pool of blood. Now I have the background grass. Now the background grass is a layer of grass, gets pre-multiplied, just the background grass. Remember that as always, you first put the shadows of the object and then you actually go ahead. Um, I actually left one thing wrong here. I should really go back because it shouldn't be that dark. 
um, the shadows, uh, of course, I was just showing you and then I forgot. Um, so you should always put the shadows first and then put the objects. So these are the two objects that we're putting, the skull and the actual grass. Goes into a 3D system, gets color corrected, uses the same bouquet. At this stage, I'm using the PG bouquet as a clone. So it's always the same PG bouquet. So it's always the same PG bouquet with the same kernel and the same iris. Uh, then I go here and I can see now I have a 3D system with a sky and some basically some, you know, some grass and some shadows, which is starting to look quite cool. Um, then I go ahead and have my katana. Now the katana is split between the CG object of the katana. I have also the actual reddish katana from the reflection of the blood. Uh, I also have the actual uh, highlights uh, of the katana. I asked Robin to paint in some highlights, pretending that it's like a highlight pass. Um, I also have some paint uh, brushes on it, some blood, uh, blood splatters that are actually painted on top. And that all gets color correct. So first of all, of course, the redness of the katana itself uh, that goes in here gets pre-multiplied. Then we put in the highlights of the katana, which makes it look so much nicer. Then we have the uh, katana. So now the highlights goes as, as a merge. Uh, this one, of course, the painting gets masked by its alpha channel and then goes in on top. This just gives you a nice little touch of paint uh, strokes on top of the katana. Uh, then I have the blood. Now the blood needs to be, of course, uh, the, the blood is just a splatter like this. It's using splatter blood. Uh, we use the alpha channel of the katana to actually cut it through the katana and then we merge it on top. So you now have blood splatter just in the blade and nothing else. This goes into a 3D system uh, uh, projection. So this, of course, is the actual katana um, from CG, from Maya. Uh, this is the actual object. It's uh, the CG object that we imported as an Alembic cache. And then we just basically project the painting on top. Of course, if you look through the back, it looks a bit weird. But looking from the front, it looks great. And then you get the nice parallax of the projection. So the cool thing with this project is that it, because it's the 2.5K, uh, 2.5D technique, we're basically doing three-dimensional with painting, which is great. So it's almost like a living painting. That's why I was so happy with doing this job. Um, then this got, gets a bit color corrected, uh, the blade itself. And then, of course, it gets merged. Uh, now, before it gets merged, there's a bit of a thing going on here. Um, I wanted to have some nice, nice highlights with glow. So I pull in a really, really subtle glow. Uh, then I pull in a really large glow, merge it on top, merge it on top, and then you get these little, little highlights of glow, which is nothing more than when the sun or the moonlight hits an object. So you get like this kind of diffusing happening. Again, same uh, sharpness, just to give it a bit more character, because remember, this is a cartoon, it's a, a comic book, so you wanted to give this kind of sharpness into it. It uh, gets merged on top, um, and so at this stage, this is what we have so far. We have the katana, the blood, the reflection of the katana, and all the other stuff in the, in the actual background. Then from here, we have the foreground grass. Now, the foreground grass is just like the other grass that you saw. We have all the layers here on 3D cards, and then they all get merged one at a time, and then they get projected. Now, the way that this is projected is basically as cards in here on the 3D system, as you can see. And then this gets, um, again, the bouquet. Uh, notice that I didn't have uh, the actual PG bouquet for depth of field on the katana, because the katana, I wanted to keep it sharp, so I didn't really bother to put any depth of field. And so now I have everything together. So as you can see now, I have a really nice 3D system uh, going on here, um, which is, sorry, just a second. Um, so I basically have my katana, my grass, my floor, and my sky as well on a really, really nice tight projection system. And uh, this then goes into the top. Then last but not least, I have the katana shadow. Uh, the Katana Shadow is also a projection system on the floor. Uh, basically, it's this, um, because I wanted to have an alpha channel for the Katana Shadow, uh, and this is what it is. It's basically a, a projected... Basically, I have the Katana itself um, in here. Then it gets projected to an apply material, so that you get like the actual shadow 
uh, merged on top of the floor. So you get this kind of basically using the geometry, you get the floor uneven. Uh, that that gets rendered out, gets out, rendered out as an alpha channel. Uh, then uh, I put some depth of field on it. And then, like I said before, uh, I basically use it uh, in here so that I get this nice shadow using a color corrector. Uh, color corrector is set to gain 0, 02. Then, last but not least, I have uh, some extra textures. So this is just some scratches, extra scratches that we have. I put them on the 3D card. Uh, this is nothing more than a layer that is right in the f in the back between the sword and the actual uh, katana. This is being set as a multiply. Reason by it being a multiply is because I wanted the scratches to have, because we already had the white scratches from the background, but I wanted some black scratches just to give it a bit of texture. As you can see here, it just gives this kind of nice touch of dirt uh, and grittiness to the shot. Especially on these lines here, you basically just get these really nice dirt li layers. Then I go into some depth, of, some color correction. I have a little uh, weighted blur here with some glow. This glow, of course, is just a really subtle diffusing that I give on top of the whole image. Then I have, of course, a bit more diffusing of the highlights. This time, picks up the highlights from the from the actual sword and the highlight from um, the actual skull, um, and then get merged and merge. And this just gives you this kind of nice look. It gives you a little ping of light on both the katana, but also a bit of diffusing happening in the actual skull as well. Then I have some nice color correction. Uh, as you can see, this color correction is nothing more than pushing. You can see here from my vector scopes and my waveforms, it was quite compressed. There was not a lot of uh, exposure here. It's quite dark, so I'm just pulling it up a bit and so I can get a bit more image, especially get like this kind of punchiness uh, look, get this nice highlight in the back and also the, the grass now, which was quite dull, now it's like really golden and, and you kind of, it's a very graphical shot, of course. It kind of looks like it's sun, but it also looks like it's nighttime. It's a bit crazy, really, but uh, it works really well. Then I have some nice vignetting, another piece of nice vignetting going on here. Uh, some nice chromatic aberration uh, just on the sides. Nothing fancy, just the chromatic aberration enough to just displace the edges of the screen, just to give it a bit more uh, nice look. I did put some col some um, lens distortion because whenever you do these kind of things, putting some lens distortion really helps to sell the shot. As you can see here, this is lens distortion from 35 millimeter, which is nothing more than the lens that I used on the camera in Nuke. And then I have some extra sharpness at the end, and then we have some grain. Now, the way I did the grain is I actually got a plate of grain. This is actual 35 millimeter grain uh, that I got a plate from. Um, and then what I do is I grade it slightly, and then I do a soft light to actually add the grain on top. So you get this kind of uh, emulation, uh, like a, almost like it looks like it's the actual grain from the footage. I also have a cheeky extra grain on top um, as well. Uh, this is again a very stylized comp. So, and then I render it, and the final shot uh, looks kind of like this. That's really it. Really proud of this shot. Really simple shot though as well, if you can see the techniques that we used. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to do a couple of more disconstructions from this project uh, while I'm at it. Um, and as always, um, if you guys would like to support and see more of these videos, please don't hesitate to go to Patreon. Um, for you to find me, it would be Patreon slash Hugo's Desk. And if you guys would like to support it with one dollar or more, then you can see much more of these videos. If you can't support it, that's okay as well. All my videos end up on YouTube channel Hugo's Desk for free, and you can watch them there. I hope you enjoy this video. I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye bye.